You think there's B12 and iodine in chickpeas and beans? Are you stupid? Expert opinion, though! I noticed that The Fail Online has done another vegan article, so I thought we'd better check it out. Just how healthy are vegan meals? Well, if you're making them from scratch using legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs and spices, you know, whole plant foods as they come from nature, it's going to be the healthiest food in the world. It prevents 14 of the 15 leading causes of death, treats most and can reverse up to five or six. Whereas eating any appreciable amount of animal products is seriously raising your risk for death. As supermarkets cash in on veganuary and the trend for plant-based foods grows, our expert guide. All right, fail online, let's see how experts you really are. For many of us, January marks the annual veganuary challenge when we are encouraged to give up eating meat for a month for environmental and health reasons. Veganism has nothing to do with environment and health. It's about not hurting animals, not murdering them so you can eat their dead bodies in a sandwich. What about that? Jesus Christ. And also, are you seriously making out that people do veganuary and then go back to eating a horrible, uh, unethical diet for 11 months and then do veganuary again year in, year out? I don't think so. While there is evidence that intensive meat and dairy farming contributes to the release of atmosphere warming gas, it's no shit, Sherlock. Research also suggests that cutting down on red meat and eating vitamin and mineral packed vegetables and plant foods can help reduce our risk of obesity and developing conditions such as type 2 diabetes. How about it can reverse them? Reverse. Around 3 million people tried veganery last year. It's estimated that more will follow suit in 2022. Well, duh. Who wants to be the cause of their own death? Who wants to harm animals unnecessarily? It's very obviously going to continue to grow year on year. The number of Britons switching to a plant-based diet has nearly doubled in a decade. That is some exponential growth. Which side of history are you going to be on? The right side? or the wrong side, are you going to be an extremely late adopter? Supermarket shelves are now stocked with more ready-made vegan fare than ever before, but does being vegan automatically make these dishes healthy? Of course not, don't be so stupid. Prepackaged meals are usually either horrible or atrocious. But again, veganism is not about health, it's about not murdering animals for your taste buds, you selfish git. Anyway, they're doing some taste tests. Linda McCartney's vegetarian sausages. Expert opinion, these compare well with regular pork sausages. I've eaten them before, they taste exactly the same, except there was no nasty, grisly bits, which makes you feel sick to your stomach, even though, you know, you eat dead animals. They're high in fiber and low in saturated fat compared with standard sausages. No shit, it's about like less than 10%. The protein content is similar to pork, but they have 50% fewer calories. On the downside, salt content is high. Yeah, I don't recommend eating processed junk. Also, the inclusion of ingredients that you wouldn't normally find in your kitchen, such as a red oxide, a coloring, yeah, not so good, and rehydrated textured soya protein means these count as ultra processed foods. These foods have been linked to rising rates of obesity. Are you honestly saying that TVP is going to make you obese quicker than pork sausages are? Don't be so bloody ridiculous. 7 out of 10, similar texture and seasoning to pork sausage, though much lighter and less greasy. And they're not going to kill you. Pro tip, I prefer the rosemary and red onion ones. I would give them 10 out of 10 for taste. Wasabi, home bento veg gyoza noodle bowl. Fried wheat noodles with cabbage, white onion, carrot, green pea served with fried vegetable gyoza, type of dumpling, teriyaki sauce, sachet, and seared red pepper and yellow pepper. It contains both dumplings and noodles. This bowl is very carbohydrate heavy. What's wrong with that? We run off of carbs. Carbohydrate is our species specific preferred fuel source. Of course, I would prefer not to see like uh, white refined grains as you know the carbs or should be tubers whole grains fruits that kind of thing but this guy or girl or whoever Dwayne 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 Meller hasn't got a clue it's also low in protein compared with other noodle bowls that contain either fish or tofu and Betty packs one of your five days of vegetables make up a small portion of the serving I'm glad he's mentioning tofu in there um the other thing I will say though is that most nutritionists seriously overemphasize protein you don't really most people don't need to worry about it as long as you're eating a predominantly whole foods plant-based diet you're going to get probably twice as much as you need my main concern though is the salt content yeah, salt is horrible. It's the number one dietary contributor towards Alzheimer's disease, which is the biggest killer of UK citizens uh, now. Yeah, don't eat packaged crap. And if you take a close look at the sources, lots of ingredients are types of sugar, including fructose syrup and molasses, meaning a serving contains seven teaspoons of sugar. Sugar is the second biggest contributor towards Alzheimer's disease. So again, yeah, don't, don't be eating this stuff. Just eat whole foods. Two out of 10, a bland bowl of sticky starch, which will make you uh, have dementia. 
If you'd like to optimize your health, body shape, or performance with a vegan diet, then please check out my new online nutrition course. I've launched it at a low introductory price. It contains 14 videos, three cookbooks, and masses of downloadable and printable PDFs, including a complete nutrition chart for all ages and stages of life, so you can be sure that the whole family is thriving. Plant Pioneers battered fishless fillets, jackfruit and king oyster mushroom in a crispy batter. Jackfruit is commonly used as a replacement for meat or fish in vegan ready meals because its flaky pull apart texture is quite similar. The problem is that it doesn't have anywhere near the same amount of protein. Yeah, if you are gonna eat these packaged meals, I wouldn't eat too many which are not legume and whole grain heavy. Also lacks the vitamins and minerals you get from fish such as vitamin B12 and iodine, although you could compensate this by eating some chickpeas or beans with it. You think there's B12 and iodine in chickpeas and beans? What are you, stupid? Expert opinion though! Also, this contains ingredients such as tapioca starch and fully refined soybean oil, which means it counts as ultra processed food in a similar way to a regular fish finger. Oh no, my vegan fish fingers are ultra high processed, like the fish fingers that I'm displacing anyway, except I don't have to murder 2.7 billion trillion rather sea creatures every year to, to fill my greedy gats. 4 out of 10, fish like texture and slightly fishy taste, but not very filling. Slightly fishy taste. Ew. Foodology 5 a day plant pot chili verde. A super nutritious plant based twist on a classic chili. 5 of your 5 a day, fat free, high in fiber, and vitamin C. Sounds pretty good. This is a good source of fiber due to all the vegetables it contains. Peppers, carrots, and tomatoes, which amount to all your 5 a day in a single pot. Don't just eat 5 a day. The Japanese have touted 17 a day forever. The only reason we say five a day is because the UK government thinks you're too stupid to care enough about your own health and that they think, oh, at least you might eat five if we set the bar so bloody low. At one gram, the salt content is lower than most ready meals. It's still like, if that's just one meal, that's not great. Although the sugar level appears high, most of it seems to come from vegetables and concentrated vegetable juices. Onion juice, for instance, is high in sugar. Do you think? <laughs> you might consider bumming up the protein, which is less than 15% of your daily needs by adding some canned chickpeas or lentils. Yeah, good, uh, good work. Nine out of 10, a high if slightly sweet stew with a fiery kick. I'm suspicious they've put a bit of sugar in there. Anyway, for a fast food option, looks pretty good, eh? Tesco shortcut spaghetti and tomato sauce. Durham wheat pasta carefully cooked in a delicately seasoned sauce. Oh, I bet they were really careful when they made that massive, like, horrendous industrial drum of just crap. Although this canned meal doesn't advertise itself as a vegan option, it certainly qualifies. It's low overall in fat, saturated fat, and medium for salt, but at 116 calories per serving, it's too low in calories to make a decent lunch for most people. Who the hell's gonna eat that on its own anyway? Consider adding wholemeal seeded toast and vegan cheese for a more nutritious meal. Most vegan cheese is based on coconut oil, which is a worse risk factor for coronary heart disease than beef fat, believe it or not. Not as bad as butter, worse than beef fat. So uh, you can use a vegan cheese, choose a nut based on like cashew nuts, like some like Thai cheese or nut crafted creamery, very good. Four out of 10, the tomato sauce is much too sweet. What a load of crap anyway, he's gonna buy that, just don't. Wicked Kitchen, red Thai inspired vegetable curry. Cooked jasmine and black rice, pak choy, child grilled red pepper, sweet tomato, baby corn, sugar snack peas, and soybeans, the red Thai style curry sauce served with coconut milk and lime dressing. Wouldn't be having coconut milk personally. There's a good range of vegetables in a rainbow of colors, providing fiber, good for the gut, vitamin A. No, it's got carotenoids, which we convert into vitamin A. Vitamin C, yeah, worry about. It's also low in saturates, and the black rice is higher in protein than white or brown rice, provides some plant-based diet, it needs to make hemoglobin, which is red blood cells. Thanks for the lesson. One portion, however, contains nearly a third of your daily salt limit, as well as some added sugar. Bit of good stuff, bit of bad stuff. I'm glad it exists, though. Zingy curry with satisfying chunks of veg, quite filling. Hang on, you're giving it 9 out of 10, but now you're giving it 8 out of 10. Make your bloody mind up. Heinz 5 beans. Mixed beans in a tomato sauce counts as one of your five a day. This is a variant on the standard baked bean, a dish that is naturally vegan anyway. Yeah, why are you talking about them? Canned beans can be a great source of protein and fiber. You'll get a quarter of your daily, daily fiber and protein needs plus one of your five a day. The variety of beans doesn't provide any measurable health benefits, but does make it more palatable. I beg to differ. You're gonna have a range of different nutrients. The concept of food synergy means that nutrients in one ingredient amplify the health benefits of nutrients 
in other ingredients, you're going to get more antioxidant action, more anti-cancer protection, and you're getting a myriad of different fibre types to feed different types of Prevotella, the preferential bacteria in the gut. That these 99% of the genes that control your health destiny um, belong to these bacteria. Only 1% of your genes control your health potential. It's so serious. The best thing we can do to optimize our gut health, which is the best thing to optimize our total health, is to eat the more diverse range of whole plant foods. So if you're gonna eat five beans, different types of beans instead of one, that's massively better. This guy hasn't got a blinking clue about nutrition. Seven out of 10 tastes there, similar to regular baked beans, but more interesting. At least they've, uh, I don't know why they've put it down twice, but at least they've got seven out of 10 uh, both times. Cook spice apple and bad brie tart. Say tart. Tort made with polenta, ground almonds and spiced Bramley apple and topped with blackberries. Expert verdict, no one expects a cake to be the healthiest dish. There you go. But as desserts go, this only has 213 calories per portion. What's the big deal? Like, we do need to eat some calories. Like, not everything has to be ultra low calorie. Add three teaspoons of sugar per slice from added sugar, fruit and fruit juice extracts. Fruit juice is really horrible for your health because the fibers removed, it acts like a refined sugar in the body and just promotes disease. As you've got less sugar than some of savory, some of the savory products featured here and for an occasional treat, it's not a bad bet. But this is supposed to be labeled as high in fat because of coconut oil. Oh, I don't need that. Nuts and contains less than one gram of fiber. Do you know what the best dessert is? Fruit, real fruit, whole fruit, delicious mangoes, bananas, strawberries, all the peaches, all this lovely mouth-watering fruit, super healthy. And then just add in a little nuts and seeds for some healthy fats. <laughs> Six out of 10, light and almondy with a cake-like texture, quite moorish, nine out of 10. <laughs> Ginster's corn vegan peppered steak slice. Marinated corn with potato and onion cooked in pepper and coconut milk again sauce. Get that processed coconut stuff out of here with a hint of mustard wrapped in a light puff pastry. Corn is made from mycoprotein, a type of fungus. I think you'll find it's some protein that they've extracted from mushrooms or fungi, which is a source of fiber and actually contains, contains more immune boosting zinc per hundred grams than the beef burger. And none of the sat fat trans fats, cholesterol and the hemine that drive disease and kill like more people than uh, anything else you can think of. However, mycoprotein has much less vitamin B12. Why would it have any and fatigue fighting iron than beef mints? When I worked as a nutritionist and wrote plans for people, I used to get three and a half X the amount of iron they needed without even trying just from eating the range of plant foods. When we have adequate plant iron, our intestines block the absorption really well. Uh, if we get too much heme iron, I mean, that's highly toxic. It drives heart disease, some GI cancers, diabetes, and our bodies are only about a fifth as efficient at blocking it. Iron overload is a thing and it's really horrible. Hydroxyl radicals, the worst type of uh, free radical, comes from heme iron. No one is dying from deficiencies. No one needs to eat heme iron. We need plant iron. It's much healthier. While the slice is probably slightly healthier than a similar meat product, it still contains nearly 20% of your daily salt intake, 50% of your daily saturates. Overall, not a very healthy option. Pasties. They're not healthy. Who knew? 3 out of 10. Crispy pastry filled with a peppery sludge. 4 out of 10. <laughs> Marks and Sparks Plant Kitchen Vegan Three Cheese Stone Baked Pizza. A stone baked pizza paste topped with tomato sauce and a trio of cheeses. This vegan cheese pizza is slightly lower in fat and calories than the standard version, but contains exactly the same amount of salt and saturated fat, more than half a woman's recommended daily intake and over a third of a man's. The saturated fat comes from coconut oil based vegan cheeses, which count as ultra high processed foods linked with obesity. Worse still, coconut oil's long and very long chain triglycerides, which are found in animal products, by the way, drive heart disease, our number one killer, stroke, Alzheimer's disease. Why aren't you talking about this? These cheese pizzas are much lower in calcium and protein than standard ones. Well, dairy calcium is only 30% bioavailable. If you look at dairy milk versus this, a similar amount of kale, there's about twice as much calcium in the kale and it is 70% bioavailable versus dairy milk's 30%. Get a clue. Four out of 10, a nice pizza with a slightly artificial cheese taste. Seven out of 10. These numbers are really an arbitrary, aren't they, son? <laughs> Plant, live, mushroom and chestnut burgers. 
they love a bit of it. Although I do have it on good authority that they're intimidated by the dirty pigeons. A seasoned mix of mushrooms, potato, chestnuts and onions. Expert verdict, these are low in saturated fat and medium rated overall for fats and salt, says Claire Thorntonwood. They do, however, have only about 25% of the protein you'll find in a beef-based burger, but none of the cholesterol or trans fats, which are the things that are actually killing us, and very little of the iron or zinc needed for a healthy immune system. They have to just eat real food instead. So while there are some pluses, you'll need to think about topping up on protein in this meal. Is this woman like a bodybuilder or a powerlifter or a strong woman or something? Oh. 7 out of 10, delicately flavoured with decent chunks of chestnut. 6 out of 10. Bowl, fresh veg pot, creamy Japanese katsu curry. Sounds delish. Chargrill sweet potatoes, brown rice and edamame beans and a creamy katsu sauce with hints of warming ginger. Source of fibre, two of your fibre date. This is low in fat and a great source of fibre at 10 grams a pod, mainly from the beans and brown rice, providing a third of your daily needs, says Claire. If you think 30 grams of fibre a day is a good thing to aim for, you're woefully mistaken. The more fibre we eat, the less all-cause mortality, stroke risk goes down, uh, and there's no upper limit. Like The more, the better. 30 is a very paltry amount. In fact, ancient man and some modern tribes people eat up to 150 grams a day every day. I've eaten up to 160 a day, and look at me, I'm a specimen. A mix of leafy greens, sweet potato and carrot probably counts as two of your five a day, although exact quantities aren't stated. Some greens like kale or the crucifers are great when you pre-chop them. It's good to pre-chop them because you create more sulforaphane, which is really like an anti-cancer, like it really boosts your uh, liver enzymes. However, when you pre-chop things and leave them for hours or days, you get these exotoxins produced and these negate the anti-inflammatory effects of these vegetables. So it's not really a great idea to, to consume these. When you're chopping your crucifers, leave them 40 minutes before you cook them. And with alien vegetables like onions, garlic, shallots, carrots, leeks, that kind of thing, chives, uh, chop them and leave them for 10 minutes before you cook them. And then you get much more of the allicin. Plant pioneers, lasagne. What is it? Layers of rich soya ragu, pasta and silky white sauce. This has two thirds less saturated fat than you'd get in a regular beef lasagne, which is good as too much saturated fat has been linked with being bad for heart health. No shit, Sherlock. It's surprisingly high in sugar at 12.9 grams per serving. While some of this will come naturally from the ingredients, some is added sugar, e.g. barley malt extract, which is used to enhance flavor and color, uh, rapidly broken down with adjusted to form maltose, a type of sugar. Don't eat too much sugar, people. This meal also lacks the iron that you get from red meat, but at least it won't kill you. Five out of 10, bland and rather slimy, although the soy mince has a similar texture to real beef. Four out of 10. I'll give this article zero out of 10 and minus one out of 10. Marks and Sparks, plant-based kitchen, sweet and sour, no chicken. Good, you leave those chickens alone. What is it? Tender pieces of pea protein coated in a crispy batter, eggless fried rice and sweet and sour sauce. This has moderate amounts of protein and fibre, although you could increase these by adding some fresh veg or edamame beans to your plate. It's not called sweet and sour for nothing. One serving has over 30 grams of sugar. What a surprise. More than seven teaspoons, in fact, which exceeds the recommended daily limit. My recommended daily limit for refined sugar is zero. Like most vegan alternatives, it also lacks the iron and B12, which you'd get in a meat-based version. You know the B12 that you do get in meat? It's a freaking supplement anyway. Why do you want to eat foods that drive the leading cause of disease in humans when you could just take the supplement directly? Cut out the middle move. Three out of ten stodgy and tasteless protein balls in a sickly rich sauce. Mmm, sounds delish. And last but certainly not least, cook roasted vegetable and chickpea curry. Oven roasted peppers with cauliflower and spinach in a gently spiced chickpea and lentil sauce. This provides a decent amount of protein over a sixth of your daily needs, but it's not a sixth of my daily needs in a serving needed for muscle building. How many people are actually building muscle? Well, let's be honest. 7 out of 10, delicious filling and mildly spiced, 9 out of 10. So what have we learned? We already knew that processed foods are too high in salt, sugar, and often coconut oil to be healthy. The so-called experts that the daily fail hires are just not experts at all now, are they? And they just throw up any arbitrary number to score their dishes. Now click this.